Clothing from Buddy Pew provided by Bill Owens Clothing. Bill Owens Clothing is a proud sponsor of the Buddy Pew Show. We had the second half highlights. Bulldogs won the toss. We deferred to the second half, but not a good way to start no, the second half. And and Antoine, we worked so hard on that sky kick, and he was really disappointed because he was all excited about catching it, and all of a sudden it bounces right through his hands. But you know, we get started off with a bang, and Courtney Ingram and Leon Smith just hit this guy so hard until you know they couldn't hardly get him off the field. I'll tell you what, there were a few <laughs> Delta Devils that had to be helped off the field Saturday night. Oliver Hughes, the quarterback now, and again the pressure, and there he is is again Pat Washington his Pat, second sack Pat if, if Pat would just get into being you know one of these Dwight Freeney kind of guys look at him he makes another play here he could be the same kind of guy as that Dwight Freeney guy that plays for the coach outstanding uh, uh, job by Pat Washington out of Baptist Hill High School down in Charleston and David Irby oh, textbook man. tackle boy oh. does he play angry football yeah Irby and, and, and Donovan Richards I think Irby is the one who really gets him but Donovan is there too and then we throw a little bubble ball outside here again and you know, Elmore's running. You can see him running. I, I, I think Trey Williams and and, uh, and Norwood are just blocking their guys all the way down the field, too. And Coach, Elmore seems to be so much more confident now. And then Ashton Jordan behind a great job from that offensive line. If we could ever get Elmore really on the same page with everybody else, he, he would really be special. But Ashton's really got some good runs here. And I think he's a little disappointed with the way he played in the first half. So we opened up some nice size holes, and he's really running well here. Ashton Jordan had 12 carries, 77 yards on the night. His little screen, Tyler McDonald taking it inside. This is our five. new freshman wide receiver, and I'm so excited about him and hoping that he'll, you know, really get going here pretty soon because I think he's really a talent. And, you know, we give the ball here to Ashton and Devin Ward and some of those other guys out there. I think maybe uh, 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 Dwayne Clark are blocking pretty good for him, and we score and uh, we pick, we kick the PAT. Three yard touchdown run by Ashton Jordan. Ten play drive, 74 yards, took three and a half minutes. Bulldogs lead 31 nothing. Mississippi Valley back on defense and I'll tell you what and you, you think that he's got some space there and Dominique Gale just comes from his safety position flying up there picture perfect tackle it was a great looking play here and then this is Donovan and Jason Ayers you know running around here making plays and uh, I think Courtney gets a little bit at the end but you know those guys are the two that really make it happen heading to the fourth quarter total domination by South Carolina State up 31 to nothing at this point Malcolm Long very efficient offensively and there uh, is Linnell Elmore once again yeah Elmore got him this is a little return right he goes like he's going in and then he runs out and then you know we end up throwing the ball here on the on the rollout style kind of route and Devin's got to get out and cut that guy on the edge and you know they they don't really protect the, the deep ball and we throw the ball to Richard Christian I I thought Christian was going to go all the way here, but, you know, they did catch him. I'm going to tell him a defensive lineman actually caught him. And then you see that block there by Norwood. He really is a physical guy. And I'm thinking that that's going to be a, a part of our offense that we're going to really be able to exploit with Norwood's physicality here pretty soon. And then they almost get Malcolm. You know, we get beat up a little bit in the offensive line. And then Trey Williams, and I thought he scored there. I mean, that ball looked like it was over, but, you know, we ended up having to come back and go one more play. And then, you know, we give the ball to uh, Ashton and, you see our offensive line really doing a nice job. Dwayne Clark and, and, and John and some of those other guys. And he gets in for the score. And, you know, we get another PAT. Ashton with his second touchdown run uh, completes a, a non-play 80-yard drive. Took eight minutes, uh, three minutes and 38 seconds. Made it 38-0. South Carolina State, Kristen Watkins. Now, Chris Watkins with a run here. And Dominic Ellis saves the touchdown. And and Donovan Riches, I was surprised that guy ran by him because Donovan's one of our faster guys. But then Courtney Ingram comes off the edge here and boom. Boy, that was really a nice a sack back there. Courtney Ingram out of Milledgeville, Georgia's ball in high school with the sack. And Derek Wiley now, cleanup time for South Carolina State to throw out in the flat to Linnell Elmore and another big game touchdown run for Linnell Elmore. It was, and this catch actually broke our single game receiving uh, record for Linnell Elmore. And, you know, I was happy to see Wiley get in the game. We want to get him some work, and, you know, he's been back from that ankle injury, and we're excited about what he brings as a changeup for us at quarterback. That was the way it ended up. Total domination from South Carolina State winning it 44 to nothing over Mississippi Valley. I'll be honest, we had uh, had a lot of carryover from last week. There was a lot of built-up frustration and emotion within our guys and our staff, and uh, we just wanted to come out tonight, and it uh, didn't matter who really showed up tonight. That was our goal was uh, we kind of had a zero-tolerance deal going through last week's practice where we were trying not to allow a yard, whether it was rushing, passing, 
any kind of play, our goal tonight was zero yards. You saw Pat Washington show up, of course, with Leon and, and Ronell on the inside, and of course, Jason so hard to block. Those guys just did a tremendous job, and Joe Council really stood up, and uh, he was hard to handle inside, too. It's easy when you come out on Saturday nights when you work hard all week. It comes easy. The linebackers was really calling, calling some of the plays out throughout the game, and I pretty much knew where to be. So that's how I pretty much get, get there so fast, got there so fast. We made a, a, a good showing today, you know, offensively came out first to drive one touchdown, uh, one play and scored, you know, but uh, we, we still got to execute more throughout the whole game and play the whole four quarters. We talked a lot, you know, this past week and after the Georgia Tech game, we, we said we got to get our timing down and, you know, become more as, as a quarterback receiver connection. Really last week was just mental lapses, wasn't concentrating. So I just concentrate on catching the ball first, and after catching the ball, coach say, make something happen. Is mostly catch the ball first, and get keep the yards that we have when we catch the ball, and worry about extra yards. Well, Elmore certainly did that on Saturday night. You look at the stats, total domination by South Carolina State, 489 total offensive yards to just 44. And coach, I, I top to bottom, you can't get any better than that. Anytime you hold a team to minus nine, minus nine yards rushing, and then you know hold them to less than 50 yards total offense, you know I think that's the definition of total domination on defense. And then you know we had about 500 yards on on offense, so I think we had. Some pretty good success against Mississippi Valley this past Saturday. The, the State Farm drive of the game, you could really pick your poison as far as what it is that you decide to use when you start, uh, start talking about that. But, of course, you look at South Carolina State, uh, so many drives to uh, choose from. But Malcolm Long, just an outstanding play. But uh, look at this, and, and Chris Massey, one play coach, 35 yards, not any easier than that. Right. We run the split zone after having, you know, gotten the fake punt and, uh, had, you know, massive scores on a on a nice job by offensive line and fullback as, the, as we run the uh, uh, split zone play. With that, we'll take a time out here on the Buddy Pugh Show and we'll tell you what's up next for your South Carolina State Bulldogs after these messages. Next big Bulldog game, stock up on the most delicious tailgating packages around at Fats Cafe, where regulars get treated special and everyone's a regular. All right, the Fats Cafe, Fats Facts, as we look around the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, Maryland, total domination over Morgan State, 62-3. Winston-Salem State, a big win over North Carolina Central, 34-27. You see the Bulldogs win over Mississippi Valley. Norfolk State getting past North Carolina A&T, 23-14. Florida A&M at Dover, Delaware comes away with a huge road win, 17-14 in Hampton over Howard, 31-21. Coach, and what stands out to you there as we make through our second week of college football? I think the Florida A&M Delaware State game is the one that we paid that we are paying the most attention to. Florida A&M gets a road win in the conference. That's always big. Uh, Hampton actually beat Howard. That was a road win too, but Howard hadn't been quite the stature of a Delaware State. So uh, you know that's a concern at this point. You know, sometimes the highlights don't really tell the entire story. We try to bring you all of the efforts of what the kids did. But one guy we didn't see a whole lot of highlights from, we saw one catch from, Coach. I'm talking about Richard Christie, who had six punt returns for 106 yards, averaged 17 yards per punt return, had had one reception for 32 yards. But Christie really played huge on Saturday night. Christie is getting to be a big part of our whole scheme. Uh, he's involved in a lot of our special teams. And and he's done a nice job at wide receiver for us. We can depend on him to catch the ball and, and make plays. So. Uh, you know, we are anticipating him being a bigger part of what we do in the coming weeks. And, of course, quarterback Malcolm Long, I mentioned earlier, 21 of 28, 232 yards, one touchdown, no interception. Very efficient at quarterback on Saturday night. Uh, I was glad to see him throw the football down the field some. Uh, we had a full verticals route. You know, we hit another little route out, in the, out, out on the right side of the deep portion of the field. That gave you some feel for the fact that we are beginning to come together as a receiver core with our quarterback. And, you know, we just got to continue to work off offensively to get ourselves put together in a way where we become more consistent. You know, we've been kind of on and off, and we and we still st that way some, but, you know, I think this week against Benedict, you know, we'll work to, you know, to get to be, you know, close to where we want to be. All right, with that, the Bulldogs take on the Benedict Tigers. Is that coming up this weekend in Columbia, South Carolina? Char 
Charlie Johnson Stadium and coach, of course, that game on the Bulldog Football Network kickoff at 2 o'clock. What are your thoughts about Benedict quickly? Well, uh, Benedict struggled some so far. I think they may be 0-3. Uh, you know, they run that same offense that, that uh, Georgia Tech ran, so I'm sure that'll give them some good information as, as how to attack us. And then, you know, their defense has been one that, you know, can give us some problems from time to time. So it'll be interesting to see, Jack, exactly how we go about, you know, getting ready for this team. All right, folks, we look forward to seeing you at the Charlie Johnson Stadium Saturday when the Bulldogs take on Benedict. And, of course, next week right here on The Buddy Pugh Show. Thank you for watching the Buddy Q Show, featuring highlights of the defending back-to-back -back NEAC champions, SC State University Bulldogs. Our sponsors are State Farm Insurance, Orangeburg County, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the Regional Medical Center, Time Warner Cable, Palmetto Health, Advanced Diagnostic Imaging Center, Fats Cafe, Paragon Builders, Bill Owens Custom Clothing, and Wood Ash Furnishing. Join us again next week for exciting highlights of SC State University Bulldog football.